Hello everybody, Marcos Villegas here with Tom Loeffler, the Managing Director of K2 Promotions. And of course, Gennady Golovkin is back in the ring this 2015, taking on Martin Murray, February 21st on HBO. And Gennady had a great 2014, had a lot of momentum coming into this year now. A great fight to, with Rubio in which he sold out the arena. But it has fans asking, why not keep him here in the U.S.? Why not keep him in California where he has a lot of momentum because of that fight uh, instead of taking him back to Monaco? Well, there's, there's a, a couple different reasons. Um, you know, with the HBO scheduling, Gennady wants to fight four times a year. HBO doesn't have it in their schedule to have four domestic uh, fights here in the U.S. But uh, more important than that, because HBO is a great television partner, it's um, keeping him, even though the U.S. fans like to have him fight here, we have to keep contact with uh, the worldwide fans. You know, he's going to be fighting primetime in the European fans. You know, all, all the former uh, Soviet countries, the Russian-speaking countries. So that's important for his global brand. And it will be televised live on HBO in the U.S. And so we'll, we'll keep that connection. But the fight after that will definitely bring him back here to the United States and, and most likely to California. During that last fight week, uh, the Rubio fight week, I, I think on Friday or Saturday, you already had a, another opponent lined up for Gennady, which is obviously Martin Murray. Is that still the same plan? You already have someone lined up in case this Cotto Canelo fight doesn't happen? I always have to think a few steps ahead at that time. So it, it's hard enough to get someone in the ring um, on short notice. You know, with Gennady, I have to give everyone you know lots of, of notice and just to see who's interested and who's not interested. I make a lot of calls and don't get any responses when it comes to a fight with Gennady. But now uh, Gennady has really established himself, especially with the uh, financial support with HBO, where he brings a lot of leverage to the table, a lot of negotiating power, and the excuse of he doesn't bring any marketability with him or, or recognition that that's gone out the window like a year ago, where now he fights in the, in the biggest arenas, you know, Madison Square Garden, the big arena, and then he not only sold out StubHub, he, he broke all the records at StubHub for any boxing match. You know, he had the biggest uh, biggest ticket sales. So we're excited for his potential for 2015, and, and we're looking forward to getting one of the, you know, putting a big fight together. Nobody's overlooking Martin Murray by any stretch of the imagination. He's probably one of the toughest opponents that Gennady has faced, but it's my job to look ahead and, and try to make strategic moves for future opponents. How is that phone call when you call someone like, hey, um, well, Gennady wants to fight you. I, had, I want someone to film you during that phone conversation, but tell me, how, how do those conversations go? <laughs> you know, I try to reach out and just to see, I mean, it doesn't even get to the point where, well, we need this amount of money. To, you know, it doesn't even get to that point. It's just like, uh, we have different plans. We're taking them in a different direction or, you know, it's a lot of different excuses. Um, sometimes I don't even get a response. I've, I've uh, sent messages and I have a good relationship with Eddie Hearn. He's, he's a dear friend of mine. But when I send him a message about why don't we do a Carl Froch fight in England and I just don't get a response. So, <laughs> so not that they say no, it's just, uh, you know, it's, um, they either have someone else they would, would rather fight uh, or just a different direction that, you know, to take the fighter in. But I think in 2015, it'll be hard because of, of everything that Gennady brings to the table now. If he's on pay-per-view, I mean, that's gonna, he's going to bring huge ratings, big ticket sales, and, and that's something that, uh, you know, people have to look at. Being on pay-per-view, of course, will ensure him that he gets those big matchups. We've seen it with Tim Bradley. He's had uh, three pay-per-views now. And he's a name that's kind of floating around for Cotto. I want to get your take on it because you have your guy, of course, that you want in with the middleweight champion of the world. We don't know if this Canelo fight's going to happen, and you have Tim now kind of being moved in there. Yeah, I mean, all those, uh, they're all great fighters. I mean, a Cotto and a Canelo fight would be a tremendous uh, event. Tim Bradley is a proven champion, uh, you know, warrior in the ring. That would be a great fight. Uh, the only thing I can do is try to put the fights together of the fighters that will realistically get in the ring with Gennady, and that's, that's my job. It's a... Uh, not an easy job, but it's getting uh, with, with all the uh, the leverage that he brings now to the table. That it's getting uh, it's getting more realistic now. Now switching up uh, things a little bit, Klitschko coming to New York. What's going on with the uh, discussions with his next uh, potential opponent? Yeah, it looks like Vladimir's going to fight in April in uh, in New York City. Um, so we're excited about that. We're excited that he's coming back to to the United States, and the fans have wanted to see him fight live, you know, here in in the U.S. And so. That's exciting. Um, nothing's really been finalized yet um, with the opponent, so we're still uh, kind of going back and forth on that. But um, as soon as uh, something does, um, you know, we'll, we'll have an announcement on that. 
Now that's the uh, juicy part for fans is the opponent. So what, what's going on here? Because I've been following you know, the Instagrams. I see Shannon saying that you guys reached out to him. Is that true? Is he the plan B if this Jennings fight doesn't happen? Well, Shannon, Shannon is a great uh, self-promoter. I mean, he's, you know, he follows Vladimir around. I mean, it gets a little bit, it gets a little bit old at, at some point, but, you know, he's definitely a star on German TV. You know, he fought Vitaly, he went 12 rounds with Vitaly, and, and they show all the, the videos that uh, Shannon does. And so, um, you know, I mean, Brian Jennings uh, w w would definitely be uh, a clear choice because he had a big win. He's undefeated. He, he just fought in Madison Square Garden. He's from Philadelphia. Um, rated number one in, uh, uh, you know, for the WBC, had the eliminator fight against Mike Perez. So um, Jennings, uh, you know, seems to be the obvious candidate, but you never know with uh, some of these other guys. Tyson Fury is uh, WBO mandatory. Um, he, you know, is a, another great self-promoter. So we see a lot of uh, young heavyweights coming up that are, are bringing uh, inner, uh, excitement to the division. and. Uh, you know, Wilder, Stavern, that's a great fight, you know, coming up. And uh, I could see, uh, you know, Vladimir definitely would want to unify the title. So there's a lot of, uh, I think there'll be a lot of uh, interesting matchups for Vladimir as well. When are you going to get the deal done for that fight coming up in New York? Well, the, the uh, proposed date is the end of April. So, I mean, that would, that would have to be done here in the next, uh, next couple of weeks, you know. And then, you know, we'd, we'd look to announce it uh, at some point after that. But... You know, it's still a lot of uh, moving parts there. You know, Bern Bonte is ma Vladimir's manager. He's the one that, you know, really does a lot of decisions uh, behind the scenes. But uh, when, when something gets finalized, then I'm sure there'll, there'll be an announcement on it. Tom, as always, thank you very much. Certainly appreciate it. Thank you.